Well, here we go. Hello, and welcome to the Dixon's Hollow Car Park in Dalby Forest. That's right, today I've travelled up to Dalby Forest to ride the UCI World Cup Black Trail. At only 6.4 kilometres, this is a short undertaking, but don't let the distance fool you. This trail is packed full of all sorts of gnarly features. So it should go without saying that for this trail, you need a bike that's up to the task. So today I'm riding my Cube Stereo 150. This should be enough beef to handle what this trailer is going to throw at it. So setting off from Dixon's Hollow, you make your way through all the styles and onto the single track. This first section is a bit of flow with a few pedals thrown in. As this first section is part of the red trail, you've got some swooping berms and small jumps to warm up on before making your way to the solid black sections. So Dalby is a trail centre that I haven't fully explored. I came here once before when I was testing out an awesome prototype from Shark e-bikes and to be honest, I was enjoying the bike so much that I don't really remember much about the trails. So today I'm really excited to see what the World Cup Black Trail has in store. One thing you will get a lot of in Dalby are these little side quest features, like this rock. Just some little extra features that riders can play on as they navigate the forest. All good fun. So this section marks where the black trail splits off and starts to climb up to the first black descent. As far as the climbs go on this trail, this is nothing. But it's certainly enough to get a bit of heavy breathing going for me, that's for sure. After reaching the smooth top section, you find yourself mounting a boardwalk with the black trail continuing down to the left onto this short technical rock section. A brilliant piece of trail. Even at this early point in the ride, I remember thinking that if the trail is filled with sections like this, it's going to be a really fun day out. And to finish off this section, a steep rock exit. Glad that was a roll. Turning onto this next section, you leave the surface trail behind you and join this more natural terrain. Filled with all the usual lumps, bumps and roots that you'd expect from a section like this, you just know the trail is building to something. In fact, you slowly work your way along to one of my favourite parts of the entire black trail. The gully. Now this is the part of the trail that I've been thinking about riding the entire car journey up here. And I know what to expect, but it's not just the gully itself that's real fun. There's a drop into it that looks particularly exciting that I'm yet to try. Okay, so this is the top of the gully and this is the feature I've been looking forward to. Let's have a little look first. Oh, cool. So there are a few ways to enter this gully, a couple of little ramps down there, and then this thing off the top here. I think this is the way we'll go. Let's check it out from the below. So by the time you land down here, it's actually gonna be quite a big drop. So if you land in here, I mean, that's seven or eight foot. But it does look like a little hop and then, I mean, you can even just roll that, I think. Wow, cool. That'll be fun to try. With the drop done, it's straight into the gully. This thing is a winding track filled with loose rocks, sticks that blow down from the forest above, and for most of the year, this thing acts as a street. All this combines to make a fast and unpredictable ride, but damn, it's good fun. I love how rowdy it gets down here. I think it's easy to see why this is one of my favorite sections, and also why I chose to ride my Cube Stereo today. The 150-160 suspension pays for itself on sections like this. Oh, 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 yeah. It's not every day that you get to ride somewhere with a landscape as amazing as this. I can certainly see myself making more trips up here to ride Dalby Forest in the future. That was a lot of fun. But trail sections like this are not without the sacrifice. So if you can hear a bit of a funny noise, that's my front mud guard coming a bit loose. I need to put some more zippy tyres on that when I get back. 
Luckily, the rattle was nothing more serious, and there's plenty more riding to come. But there's no time to rest, because after the gully descent, you have your first of two very steep climbs. That is pretty darn steep. So as I crunch into gear, it's time to dig deep. Just as the gully descent was a challenge, on a black trail, the climbs are also going to be a challenge. And it turns out that I really need to work on my fitness, because at the top, I was in this sort of state. I'm not going to lie, that climb was brutal. Oh. This, uh, my enduro bike isn't known for its climbing, and nor am I for that matter. So that was tough. Whew, just catch my breath for a second. Huh. Huh. So once you've reached the top of the climb, you join the red trail again and start winding your way down the descent. This has lots of tight corners on, some which have very slippery rock steps. My front wheel slipped on that rock then, that was sketchy. Apart from the tight corners, this is just a nice enjoyable steep section down. Nothing too taxing and nothing too technical. Once I was near the bottom, I turned onto this steep natural rooty line. But here it's important to remember that I'm not familiar with the trail I'm riding, so my advice to you guys would be to stop and look at features before you just blindly ride them. Because as I found out, drops can appear from nowhere. <laughs> that was a bit sketchy at the end. <laughs> awesome. <sighs> After this, you're straight into the next monster climb. It's steep, it's rocky, and it's long. It's a sustained effort all the way to the top, and it's thirsty work too, as I unfortunately found out. So I've just realized in all the fun and excitement that my water bottle is missing. So it must have fallen out somewhere in the sort of bouncy rocky gully. Oh, gutted about that. Not only am I thirsty, but I don't like the fact that I may have dropped litter in the forest. But Stay towards the end of the video for the conclusion of the water bottle mysteries. So, making your way up the last bit of the climb, you turn right, ready to descend again on a natural type trail. Having just crossed the fire road on the climb, you can see that not many people add on this extra loop. It's certainly not as well worn as the rest of the trail. But, luckily for me, I like natural sections of trail, especially descents. So, this section is right up my alley. Although, this was a bad time for my drop and post to stop working leading me to navigate the slippery descent with a seat post and saddle, making manoeuvring slightly awkward. But despite my malfunctioning dropper post, I made it back down to the fire road in one piece. But things were not looking promising for my old bike. Cool, my bike has seen better days. I've got gear problems, mud guards going funny, my brakes are kicking in and out. She's on her last legs, bless her. But I still had plenty of time to daydream. So because the seasons have just changed, it's gone from being sort of dry to actually being quite wet. And of course the trail conditions change massively. So I'm having to sort of reframe my mind so I can remember how to ride in the wet again. You know, how berms and sort of muddy sections are actually gonna act under my tires. Strange feeling. So almost back at the car, the last section runs along the top of the gully entrance. It consists of a fast muddy descent into a steep and technical climb out. Despite the mud and slippery rocks, I was powering my way to the top, determined to make it all the way up. But just when victory was in sight, I slipped on a roof. Oh, at the last bit. <laughs> Gutted. Oh. So with my legs pumped and my bike falling apart, I limped the last two minutes back to the car park where I made a happy discovery. All right, you're not gonna believe this. I've just got changed after the ride and I'm just tucking into my sandwiches. I look down to my left and there's my water bottle where I left it. So I hadn't even put it on my bike to take it on the ride and there's me thinking I'd lost it. What an absolute burg. So there you have it, a ride through of the Dalby Forest World Cup Black Trail. What an epic. So thanks for watching today's video. Remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and I'll see you down in the comments. Until next time.